continuing with the exciting, very exciting game number eight. And yeah, not much happened here. Like to say that not much happened here is, well, I'll, I'll, gi I'll give it the best 10, 15 minutes I can for this one, but anything above it will be, well, abusing, not my time, but the viewer's time. So no, E4, excellent move. First, first time by Carlsen that he's playing E4. And as opposed to Anand, that is playing like he has a plus two lead and needs very few points to win the match. Actually, Ben, guess what? Carlsen is really in that situation. Yeah. He's, he's really leading before this match four and a half, two and a half. And you know, every draw is like, you know, like a huge jump, right? It's like, it's not like half a point, it's like... So, playing with white, E4, I don't know if I'm the world champ World champ, you know, fighting for survival. Maybe Sicilian, something like that. I mean, of course, white has endless amount of solid lines in whatever you want or think of playing. You want to play most exciting Sicilian? Okay, Bishop B5 check, some other solid lines. Okay, impossible to say, hey, black needs to play for a win, play dragon. Okay, you're not going to get the dragon. Knight C6, okay. But you know what? You're going to get, in many positions, the possibility for some game. Something. So what does Anand go? What? I mean, e5. I mean, once again, you know, I feel kind of kind of not okay. You know, I'm kind of bad-mouthing the world champ. Or, I mean, I, I don't want to do that. I, I don't think I'm doing it. I hope I'm not. But I, I say exactly what I see. And I see a world champ that kind of like saying, okay, you know, I don't care. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, okay, it's much easier for me. I quoted Kasparov because I said it before. And again, so much respect to Anand. I mean, uh, and he deserves every, every, uh, every bit of respect. But yet, yeah, you know, you basically see his performance in the last five years. Pretty much not winning anything major. Someone, someone had it. Uh, huh? No, yeah, yeah, but, but not games, but like tournaments. Like, what did he win? Nothing, nada. Seriously, like, won some small tournament in Germany this year. And this is over five years. Someone said, look, this is what you get. You have one player, Carlsen, that pretty much dominated the chess world, Kasparov style. Winning pretty much a, any tournament, and if not winning, s some big accident happened, and he's number two. On the other hand, you have Anand that didn't even get close to winning anything. Oh, you see it here. So, oh, Carlsen is very cool. I actually like this line quite a lot, rookie one. In 2010, this line became quite popular, actually because of a game. Carlsen against Anand. Played in Nanjing. Played in Nanjing in 2010. The tournament in China that Carlsen won. And actually, Carlsen got a winning position against Anand. The game finished in, the game finished in a draw. A month after it, Anand played it in the London tournament against McShane. But these days, 2013, in 2010, okay, there was some difficult or some ideas to create some difficulties for Black. Today, we all know it's pretty much nothing. Actually, in this building, in this building here, in the beautiful chess club in St. Louis. Two floors up. Two floors up in the boardroom. Believe it or not, two months ago, plus few days, Carlsen played this position from the black side against Ikaro Nakamura. And they played quite a long line, which led to a draw. Actually, it was an important game in the tournament because Ikaro played an excellent tournament and was almost, you know, decent chances or some chances to catch to Carlsen. So, everyone knows it and they are getting pretty much nothing. Knight d6, knight take e5. Blocking, bishop back, knight take. The other main line is knight to f5. And here actually the best move for white, or what is considered main move for white is knight f3. Basically kind of saying, you know, those knights 
those knights, <laughs> not in ideal squares. They are both targeting d4, but I'm going to play d4. This is how white is playing. It's also considered not much, considered nothing, but it's another version. At some point, actually, this was the more popular version. Take, take. I mean, OK, I can mention games Gashimo Anand from Nanjing 2010. We mentioned Carlsen Anand from, from that tournament as well. I'm going to be careful with the mic, you know, like Ben reminding. Like yes, Justin. I did like to mention the Grandmaster Manual Leon Pyros from Black Saturday. You beat him? What, what was the Simon Blades? Blitz. Very cool. OK. That. That's cool enough. Okay, so bishop f6 after <laughs> after d4. Yeah, another line is knight e8. The knight is going to move away from here, so black can get a pawn. And <laughs> rook e1. Yeah. And here, Anand McShane that we mentioned, knight f5 was played. Uh, let's see what, what is white's dream, if we can put it like that. Knight d2. The pawn on d5 gives white tiny bit of space. Tiny bit of space. a4. Actually, very cool move. Getting the rook in the game this way. Very cool move. OK. Anand had some small advantage here. The game finished in a draw. Very look, the rook is controlling also this girl. This is Anand McShane from London 2010. Let me, I want to see if I can find, uh, you know, le le let me go back just for a second, showing you the line that was played here. Once again, we said, We'll make effort to give this one. If we'll make it 20, 25 minutes, boom. That's an amazing, amazing. Knight c3 is something to consider. We basically want to go for the bishop. If white plays knight d5 and take, no, OK, <laughs> something. Uh, but this line is the one they play these days. And this one was played, as I said, two months ago, two flows up. Carlsen is black. Uh, what, what? Yeah. And I think Ikaro played g3. Now, why, why is this? You know, usually you say pair of bishops, pair of bishops. And yeah, white has pair of bishops. But look at the black's pawn chain. Completing the color dominance with the dark color bishop. So very pretty. Black has bishop to control dark squares, and the pawns are controlling the light squares. For example, if you take this bishop and put it here, of course white is better. OK, how much? Here, microscopically, you put it on computer, I think 0, 2. But with 0, 2, you are not beating Magnus Carlsen. You are not beating many, many, many strong players with 0, 2. So this is one version. And this line is just, just reasonable this way or the other. Believe it or not, all this is big theory. Like, for example, rook take rook. How should black take after rook take rook? Knight take. C3, D5. This was Adam Saronian. Nakamura Kramnik from 2013. Adam Saronian from London 2011. Not really that much here. C3. Take, take. All of this is theory. All of this was played. <coughs> Bishop d3. G6. I mean, black, black is tiny less space. You just need to exchange some pieces. I mean, queen e7 was a move played by, actually, Peter Nielsen, Heine Peter Nielsen, that is connected to both players. He was a non second for many, many years, and then he was helping Carlsen in the candidates, and in a very honorable way, I think, put himself on the side for the match. He was working for Anand for many years, then quit Anand, and kind of 
supported the opponent in the candidates, but when the real match is coming, he didn't take a side. I believe, mm, or, or at least possi decent possibility, he will be joining Carlsen team after the match. But for the match, he put himself on the side. He played this line against Mamedov. He's a huge theoretician. This was played in 2012. Okay, actually, White got tiny bit here, but Black still made a draw. G6 is very logical. Some ideas like from Queen's Gambit. The knight is making this maneuver and the very big idea to exchange bishops. Okay, we have game of Nepomniashi Rizent from 2011. So this position has already been played, you know. All this liquidation, Rosenthalis Bruzun from Montreal, very recent tournament, 2013. Rookie one. Bishop f5, yeah, how, how to make it more exciting, I don't know. <laughs> okay, knight back, he wants to put the knight here. Bishop e5, okay, here, here comes the big, big exciting moment of this game. <laughs> take, take, okay, so technically maybe white is 0, 1 better or something. And, okay, big moment, white is pressuring, attacking. Okay, knight g7, with a tiny big idea. Okay, that would have made this video much, much more interesting if he would have played this. He would have said, the funniest, most bizarre, amazing blunder in chess history. Take! And white resigned. <laughs> yeah. But like we said, you know, Gelfand was leading plus one against Anand and immediately blundered. <laughs> immediately after having a plus one lead immediately blundered. Carlsen just doesn't blunder. That's the thing. Like, he, he just, he, he very, very rarely, in the game that he loses, it looks like he just kind of wasn't focused enough or maybe tiny bit stressed, but he, he, those positions, he, it's just pretty much like computer. I mean, just positional play. So returning the ball, not making a mistake, and I mean, it's kind of somewhat depressing for chess world. I think for some, for some players, for some fans, it's kind of depressing, but you know, at least it's a big hype. So how to make a draw? Queen takes e8. Queen takes e8. Of course, queen take is not so cool, but that is exactly the idea. And Julian, congratulations. You managed to exchange every possible piece on the board against Anand and make a draw. <laughs> and probably if you had played the match, you would have made the same thing. So it's no joke. <laughs> No, and this is beautiful. They manage, they manage. Wow, look, look at that. Wow, what can you say? Absolutely symmetrical position on move 34. That's why they are the best players in the world. So, I don't know what else can we speak about. Anything interesting in sport or something? If not, then, well, next game starting in seven and a half hours. I can tell you the most interesting thing is that I've been waking at those hours whether it was a rest day or not. Like the most fascinating thing, I woke up at 3.30 on the rest day without alarm clock. One day I woke at 3.29, one day at 3.50. Just, you know, I, I just need some sleep so they should finish this match. <laughs> anyway, so really, maybe it will be nice to all of us to see games 9 and 10 much more interesting and maybe 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 you know if Anand will win something I will come here say wow I was wrong he won a game but I think everyone will be as excited as humanly possible can you imagine if Anand wins the next two games wow but it would be best match in history yeah I think then is they say he was the world champion then I think so, yeah. I mean, they should have stopped playing many, many games ago. <laughs> yes. Why did you say Anand had to play D4? This is my take, right? And obviously, obviously, he has himself, the world champion, and a team of extremely strong grandmasters that is playing E4. I just have a feeling that it's not like, let's put it this way, the ability to kill the game and I'm using that phrase, kill the game. Somewhat easier with e4 for black to kill the game as to d4. I mean, in d4, yeah, you can tell me, but Ronan, how do you get advantage against the Grunfeld? 
I don't know. Many lines are extremely interesting. In 2010, the first game, Topalov Anand, they played super crazy complicated line. Anand forgot move order. They played 22 move theory. Anand forgot switch move, was lost on move 23. So just blundered. Uh, how to get advantage against Nimzo Indian? I don't know. But there are ex so many interesting lines. So, and, and those are top openings. Maybe the comparing the Berlin, I would say Queen's Gambit, Queen's Gambit declined. But in Queen's Gambit declined, it's possible to play. I mean, here, look at the, those two games, white and black. The game was just killed, killed, nothing, nothing. I mean, you, you know, looking at the ceiling and nothing, staring at the ceiling. It's not like there are different positions when computer showing you 0, 1, minus 0, 1. And that's a big game. Night of Dragon. Yeah, exactly. the, oh, this position, it's like big, big, big heart attack. That's the problem. And I thought that Anand should play d4. And you know, ever since I played chess, I always, always, always had great respect to stronger players than me. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't have to be world champion for me to. He can just be strong grandmaster. Because no, I, I know that. I know that I worked hard to become an OK grandmaster or something, and most likely he's much better. But something is wrong, at least in my view, about those people. Like about uh, the way that the match is going for, for Anand, and I say those people is team. Well, maybe they can prove wrong tonight, you know? They will prove everyone wrong in their game. I mean, OK, objectively, I think that, that Carlsen would have won the match doesn't matter what. The only thing is that, so what if Anand wouldn't blunder in a, Nakamura was online, w live during the matches, and he suggested immediately the two moves that would make draws in the, in the games. So what if Anand wouldn't blunder and just play like Ikaro, which I think now is better player than Anand. I had dinner yesterday with some people, I told them this, I said, mm, if Nakamura would have played the match, 4-4. I mean, okay, uh, take game three, that, why t that Anand was, ma was better, and game four, that he blundered. Objectively, 4-4, four, four, like he wouldn't lose any of those endgames. He wouldn't have e even problems. <coughs> Truth to be told, Anand is great at his time, played chess for a quarter of a century at the highest level. It's probably not, uh, not what he used to be. I, I mean, I, I think that 10 years ago, we would have made easy, 10, 15 years ago, easy draws in those games. He, he wouldn't lose those. He wouldn't. He shouldn't. Couldn't. Uh, let's say that he comes down and say, Ronan, I heard what you're saying for two weeks about the match, about this. What, what should I play? I'll tell him to play d4 with white and try some lines in Sicilian with c5, look at some bishop b5. Probably it's not going to change the result, but at least it will be a better effort. Mm -hmm.